with Hello, features with severe pain, to these talks, including polyarteritis nervosa, which, involves which includes the vessels, peripheral nerves, and muscles. There are several other autoimmune disorders, such as rheumatoid arthritis or the brachial lupus, or lumbar which typically cause a polyneuropathy, uh, but about them, and in the minority of cases less may represent with a mononeuritis multiplex, and the various other vasculitic entities are listed uh, lower down on this slide. And as long as I'm putting long lists of various conditions which you'll never remember, this slide, the following is the list some of, of the anatomical features causes of acquired immune axonal neuropathy. problems with the These peripheral are nervous system. Found in immunosuppressed on the left patients, is a depiction of such a as typical nerve with HIV, and it shows that there are various medications used to treat the underlying nerves. disorder may also cause and neuropathies, they but range can also from the largest complicated by, fibers, uh, superimposed infections. And the processes the produced by the Schwann cells and, uh, and uh, if you don't memorize envelops these, the I axons won't tell anyone. to small myelinated or even unmyelinated fibers. And on the right is a depiction or a diagram of the motor unit, which is defined as the alpha motor neuron from the spinal cord and all of the muscle fibers that that particular nerve innervates. Each muscle fiber receives only um, innervation from one motor unit in health and disease. That may be a different story. And there may be a variable ratio between each motor unit and the number of muscle fibers that it innervates, but it averages at around 150. Now, the testing that can be done to help us clinically distinguish between axonal and demyelinating neuropathies or motor neuron disease is the well-known nerve conduction velocity and electromyogram test. And the next slide is a very short, actually directed at patients, introduction to that study. But uh, it's going to be important when we discuss the differences in the neurophysiology of the various neuropathy and myop myopathy types. The categorization schema that we're going to use in these talks splits up the demyelinating from axonal neuropathies and hereditary from those that are required. And a uh, prime example of an acquired immune demyelinating polyneuropathy is that of Guillain-Barre, which typically causes an ascending and symmetrical paralysis with relatively little sensory involvement. Um, but uh, that only represents 80% of uh, AIDP. About 20% are abnormal or unusual. Some of them have axonal variants, so they're obviously not demyelinating, and those include AMAN, an acute motor axonal neuropathy, and AMSAN, acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy. Then there are the variants of Guillain-Barre, including Miller-Fisher syndrome, which is about 5% of all Guillain-Barre's, which presents with an ataxia and ophthalmoparesis and not an actual weakness. And then there is a Bickerstaff syndrome, which is also about 5%, and that uh, includes a brainstem encephalitis and has particular antibodies associated with it. And here are the features that are characteristic of any demyelinating neuropathy, but in Guillain-Barre, they tend to occur in this particular order. The first finding is that of a prolonged F wave. Now, an F wave is when you give an electrical impulse, it goes up the nerve, hits the spinal cord, bounces off, and comes all the way back and causes a secondary reaction in the motor fibers. And so it's a very good indicator of the conduction velocity of the entire nerve, including its proximal segments, which can't be done really any other way. Another finding is that of a prolonged distal latency, like one sees in a carpal tunnel syndrome, but in this case, any of the nerves may show that there is a prolongation of that distal segment of the nerve. Then there are in demodic neuropathies conduction blocks, which represent for example, focal reductions in conduction velocity, such as in the elbow, the wrist, at the um, knee and the perineal nerve, 
with not only slowing but reduction in um, compound motor action potential amplitude when it's stimulated more proximally. And finally, you'll see generalized slowing of conduction velocities, but that may take up to two to four weeks in Guillain-Barre. And so the absence of an abnormal nerve conduction study does not exclude Guillain-Barre, particularly early on in the course of the disease. And so it behooves one to treat and then repeat the study later on. And here is a list of chronic acquired immune demyelinating neuropathies, most notable of which is the CIDP, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, which essentially is a chronic form of Guillain-Barre syndrome with a symmetrical generalized weakness. A variant of that is multifocal motor neuropathy, which shows only motor involvement, but it is asymmetrical. It does respond to IV, IVIG and not to steroids. And then there is a DADS syndrome, which I do include since I am one, which is a distal acquired demyelinating symmetric neuropathy. And in that case, you're looking for um, myelin-associated glycoproteins. And switching categories to the acquired immune axonal type neuropathies. These are neuropathies that don't have the characteristic features that one sees in a length-dependent neuropathy. Now, length-dependent refers to the fact that the neuronal cell bodies, whether they be in the spinal cord or the dorsal root ganglia, when they are no longer metabolically active the way they should be, there is a sort of dying back phenomenon, i.e., the most distal portions of the nerves are affected first, and so they will have, produce a diffuse symmetrical stocking and then stocking glove distribution. In these acquired immune axonal neuropathies, they have features that are not typical of a length-dependent polyneuropathy, and so you'll see an asymmetry. There may be involvement of the upper limb first, or even involvement in the cranial nerves. These neuropathies tend to have a very aggressive type course compared to the typical length-dependent neuropathies, and there may de be a great deal of pain involved in these type of neuropathies. Sometimes vasculitic neuropathies may cause a mononeuropathy, which means involvement of one nerve, presumably on the basis of ischemia of the vasonervorum, or what's called a mononeuritis multiplex, which is the involvement of several different individual nerves, but is not a diffuse symmetrical neuropathy. And here is a list of conditions which may produce a vasculitic neuropathy. Again, showing those atypical and aggressive features with severe pain, including polyarteritis nodosa, which involves medium-sized vessels. There are several other autoimmune disorders, such as rheumatoid arthritis and systemic lupus, which typically cause a polyneuropathy, but in the minority of cases may present with a mononeuritis multiplex. And the various other vasculitic entities are listed uh, lower down on this slide. And as long as I'm putting long lists of various conditions which you'll never remember, the following is the list of infectious causes of acquired immune axonal neuropathies. These are particularly found in immunosuppressed patients, such as ones with HIV, whose Medications used to treat the underlying disorder may also cause neuropathies, but can also be complicated by uh, superimposed infectious processes. And uh, if you don't memorize these, I won't tell anyone.